Hello, this is Matt from Matt Heaney Apps, and welcome to part six in our series covering all of the basics of Swift Free. In this video, we will take a look at sets. So let's jump straight into Xcode. Okay, so into Xcode, and we want to get started with a playground. And we will call this sets, and we will delete this string so that we have a nice blank playground. Okay, so sets. So what are sets and why would we use a set? Well, a set is a collection type. So we can use it to store a collection of a certain type. So we can use it to store a collection of integers or strings or doubles or, or whatever. So a set is one of three ways that we can store a collection of data. And the other two are arrays that we looked at in the last video and dictionaries that we will look at in the next video. So, a set is a collection of a single type, but it does not have an order. And the big thing with sets is that we can't have the same value in a set twice. So it's not an ordered list, which is what an array is, it is literally just a group of data. So for our example today, we will make a set of all the players currently playing our game. And for the sake of this game, there isn't a player one or a player two, everyone's just in the game, okay? And we can use this set to make sure the same player isn't in the game twice. And we can use it to find out if a player is still playing. So we will make a set. So var, we will call it players. And this will be of type a set of strings. So we will say set and in the pointy brackets, we will say string. So this collection is going to be a set of type string. So now we can simply say which strings we want to be in this set. So of all the current players in our game. So in this collection, we have four strings representing the four players in our game. Now remember, one of the big differences between a set and an array is that a set has no order. So as you can see over here, that this order is different to what we set this up as. There's no set order. We can't get say index zero because nothing's in any set order. So this is just a collection of names. It's not a list, it's just a collection. We can add to our collection by saying players.insert and we can insert another string such as Ronnie. But anything we insert and anything in this collection has to be a string. So we can't add a number because they all have to be the same type. So they all have to be strings or all have to be ints or all doubles and so on. So if we take a look at players now, Ronnie has been added to our collection. Just as a quick reminder, we can only make changes to this set because it was declared as a variable with var and not with let. Now, if we try to add someone who's already in the collection, such as Will, we can't do it because everything in a set has to be unique. So if we look at players, Will will only be there once because we can't have the same string twice. So everything in a set has to be unique. We can remove by taking players.remove and if we remove Matt and then look at players, it will remove Matt from the collection. We can also find out how many players are in the set by players.count. As you can see, we have four because we only have four people left. And what we can do, we can find out if a set has a certain value. So is a certain player playing this game? So players.contains Emma. Does players contain Emma? Yes, true, it does. And players.contains someone who isn't there, false. So with a set, we can have a collection. It will not have an order. It would just be a collection of a certain type. We can insert but the same item cannot be in a set twice and we can remove. We can find out how many items are in this collection and we can find out if this set contains a certain item. Does it contain a certain player? So that's the basic use of a set, an unordered collection and every item in this collection has to be unique. Now, one of the other cool things with sets is some of the operations that we can do on it. So there's three things that I want to show you. I want to show you union, intersection, and subtract. And that's free of the really cool things and free of the really useful things that you can do with sets. So for this, we will have a bit of a clean slate and we will just use some numbers as an example to hopefully make it easier to see what we're doing. 
So we will have two new sets, which we will call my set one. It will be a set and it will store integers. And this set will contain the numbers zero up to three. My set two, again, will be a set of integers will contain even numbers from zero up to six. So zero, two, four, six. So we have two collections of numbers. So let's have a look at three of the things we can do with sets. The first one is union. And what we can do, we can merge two sets together. So we could do let union set. So just a generic name. It's going to be a set of integers. And this will equal my set one. So this first set dot union my set two. So take my set one and merge it with my set two and set that to union set. So if we was to have a look at union set, as you can see, you can see it here as well. We have zero, one, two, three, four, and six, but not in that order. So it has merged the two sets together, but we only have six values here. And if we merge them together, surely we should have eight. But remember, we can't have the same value in a set twice. So even though two is in both sets, we're only gonna get that once. So merge the two sets together. And if a number appears twice, we will only have one of it. Okay, so that's how we can merge two sets together. With intersection, what we can do is let intersection set, again, it's gonna be of type set. This will equal my set one dot intersection, my set two. So what this one is doing, this is making a brand new set of all the values that are in both my set one and my set two. So this new set contains two and zero. So out of our two sets, the only numbers that appear in both sets are two and zero. So of intersection, we say, take a look at this set, take a look at this set, and any value that appears on both, make a brand new set out of these values. So anything that appears on both, take those and put those into our set. And the final functionality that I want to show you is subtract. So let subtract set, again of type a set of integers. And this one will equal my set one dot subtracting my set two. And as you can see, subtract set is set to three and to one. So what subtracting does is it takes my set one, takes all the values in my set one, and it would then take a look through my set two. And any value that appears on my set two, it will remove from my set one. So as in my set two, we have a zero and a two. It will go to my set one. It will remove the zero and the two, which will leave us with three and one. And that is why subtract set is set to three and one. So if sets, we can easily merge together two sets. We can easily see which values two sets have in common. And we can say, take a set and take a second set. And if any of the values from the first set appear on the second set, remove them and set the remaining values to a brand new set. So now subtract set contains any values that were in my set one, but not in my set two. Okay, so that is what a set is and how we can use one. Now, as a final point, with sets, what we can also do is cycle through this and affect every object on this set with a certain block of code. But we will explore that when we take a look at loops later in this series. So that was our introduction to sets. As always, post any questions down in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, which I really hope you did, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.